Hey guys, Eric there, it's Rod Jay-Z, and I'm at Alpeo's Troon Museum event here in Scottsdale. It's kind of like a really high-end cars and coffee event at Alpeo's private museum, and I'm here with a guy named Rich that's got this beautiful Triumph, and we're gonna be doing an interview here shortly, but in the meantime, we're gonna shoot some video here of this beautiful, beautiful car, so stay tuned for more. Hey guys, it's Eric with Eric's Garage AZ coming at you, and I have got the opportunity right now to shoot this video of an incredibly historic Triumph TR3 race car. The Triumph TR3 was a race car, and it was manufactured in England by the Standard Triumph Motor Company of Coventry, England, between 1955 and 1962. Now, this is a right-hand drive car, so it's very rare, first of all. Secondly, it's one of only a few hundred of these cars left in a country. And again, it's a Triumph TR3. And the Triumph TR3 is a traditional roadster, and it's an evolution of the company's earlier TR2 model with greater power and improved braking. Um, with approximately 74,000 TR3 sold across all variants, the model was the company's third best seller in the TR range. The Triumph was campaigned in races, hill climbs and rallies across Europe and North America with several outright team and class victories to its credit. The Triumph TR3 was introduced in 1955, an evolution, as I said, of the previous TR2. The TR3 is a roadster in its very essence. The car is meant to be driven on sunny days with the top down. It was a logical decision for the manufacturer as the TR2 had proven itself both in racing and on public roads. The TR3 shares the overall body shape in 1991cc engine with its predecessor. The motor puts out a bit under 100 horsepower in a newer car. Now it may not seem much these days, but the journalist from Car and Driver called the acceleration of the lightweight TR3 neck snapping. In fact, at the time, TR3 was more powerful than the majority of its competitors, including cars like the Porsche 356 or Sunbeam Alpine. All right, hey everybody, it's Eric with Eric's Garage AZ coming at you. And I've got a new best friend in the whole wide world named Rich. And we've got a 1953? 56. 56 Tier 3 Triumph behind us here. And is that British Racing Green? Yeah, well, it's a Jaguar British Racing Green. Okay, Jaguar British Racing Green. And this car caught my eye as soon as it came in. I was offloading camera gear, and I see this guy rolling by, and he's got a big old grin in his face, and he's driving this really cool car. And when we get around the front of it, you'll see that it, it's aggressive. I mean, Rich, so, so tell me about this car. Is this an original like race car thing? It was purpose-built race car. Really? In okay. the UK by a company called uh, Race Torations, and okay. they restore race cars. No kidding. And so one of their specialties is Triumphs. Very cool. And a Triumph has, I mean, I think I mentioned off camera to you earlier, we can come on over this yeah. guy here so I don't trip on the curb, but uh, you go ahead and step by your car there. That's all right. Um, Triumph, uh, I mentioned earlier, and when I was in the Navy in the late 70s, early 80s, they had a Triumph uh, Spitfire, which is underpowered, of course, mm -hmm. but they had the, the tier three and the tier six and whatnot. And uh, this is a race purpose built Triumph. And when you rolled in, it looked like you were having way too much fun yeah. driving it <laughs> and very, very aggressive. So tell us a little bit about this car. I mean, how did you come to get this particular car? Okay, well, I actually bought the car at Barrett Jackson. Oh, did you really? Okay. Yes. Very and cool. uh, when I first, I'm not, a, I was never a Triumph guy growing up. Right. I had Corvettes and, okay. you know, and, uh, but when I saw the car, it really caught my eye. Okay. Uh, just the stance and how it was widened out. It wasn't a normal TR3. Right. But then when I got a chance yeah, to open the hood. Six, eight inches wider, maybe 10 inches wider. It's about, I think, five or six inches okay. wider. Okay. And it's built on, I think, a TR4 frame and okay. chassis. 
The donor car was a 56 TR3. Was it? Okay. And there's not much left of that car except for the cowl with the VIN tag. Okay. And the engine block. Okay. Very and cool. uh, probably the pictures will show you there's not much left of the original engine except oh, for the block and heads. I'm kidding. So now you, you bought this car like kind of like as it is now? As it is. Very cool. I've so, only done some minor detail work on very it. Very cool. Now, what about this car caught your eye? What did you think? You know what? I got. I really want this car because of something grabbed me. Okay, well. What was it? You I, told me off camera. I love engines. Okay. Okay. And when I opened up the hood, I just said, wow. Really? Yep. And I said, I had, a, I have to have this car. Well, let's kind of make your way around the hood here. So this, as far as you know, this is all either um, original or uh, a restored condition. Most of the body work has been replaced with alloy, as they call it in the UK. Okay. We call it aluminum. aluminum. Okay. So it's all hand formed on bucks. Oh, no kidding. And wow. I actually, with the car, I got extra fenders. Oh, did you? Good Already you. painted and bubble wrapped. Oh, no kidding. Which is interesting because that tonneau cover, I did not even know I bought that tonneau cover because it was wrapped up in bubble wrap with all the other body parts and I never unwrapped them. You know, I mentioned I had a Tron Spitfire and it had the vinyl tonneau cover. And okay. I, I saw when you rolled in with that and I'm like, that's really interesting. And so I imagine it's done like that for racing purposes. Yeah, I got a leather one like that too. But Okay, 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 yeah. So And I knew that came with the car, but I never knew the aluminum one. Until I cool. unwrapped, it was like Christmas again. Oh, but I don't want to. <laughs> and then I found I found these that's fun <laughs> these upper door panels too. Really? Well, let's take a look at this here. This is really neat. Now, this is all done up. I mean the, the triumph thing have. Is it okay? Yeah, that's all been have, added. For they didn't have all those no. roll bars and stuff back in the day. It was like you know, you roll the car, you lose your head, and that's it. Right? Yeah. Done. Yep. And this is all handcrafted. You said correct. Well, it hooks on with these latches here. Now, how does it hook on the inside? Is there are there there's hooks some, like? Yeah, there's some hooks underneath here. Okay. And there's latches right here. Okay. Okay. So that way, it's not going to kind of like no bounce around and whatnot. Okay. No. Very and you cool. have to be careful when you put it on so you're not scratching the paint. All right, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. Now, do these windscreens, are they effective or do you Actually, have to? Actually, they are effective. Oh, no kidding? Yeah, so my, you don't really my, have wife's first, about... my wife's first comment, where are you going to put the wind, windscreen back on? I said, oh. no, no, just let's test drive it. Really? I know. What does she think? She thinks it's great. She sits a little bit lower in the car. Of than course, I do. yeah, but that's still fine. cool. Good for you, man. This is neat. I mean, I love the stands. And this car, you said it's a set up for race car. That's. This is a race tires. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mentioned and I did track sports. events and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh... yeah, it's all set up for racing. The guy that had it built in the UK lived in Florida. Okay. And I think it took about I don't know, a good part of two years, maybe two years plus, to build the car from really? scratch. So now you bought a Bear Jackson. What Bear Jackson? Did you buy it or did you buy Just it Just a year ago. Okay. Here locally? Yes. Oh, no kidding. Very cool. Good yeah. for you. Wow. This is just really neat. So let's make your way up to this uh, really cool part okay. here. The engine. And like I said about the only thing left original is the block and heads on this engine. Okay. All right. As so you, you see the fuel injection. Yeah, that's uh and that was custom made by Race Let's go take a look at that here. And you'll see the, the, the two fuel rails, which is pretty unusual. Especially on a little four cylinder. So you have these are two fuel rails. Yeah, one Why for low it... RPM and one for higher RPM. No kidding. And nozzle so size. So higher bigger, RPM is just bigger, both, no, bigger nozzle. Or just one nozzle. I think just one bigger nozzle. No kidding. Wow. But the car, because it's a race cam, all made up for racing. I'm gonna make my way over this way because it's a uh, bad sun here. It doesn't it doesn't like anything under three thousand RPM. But as soon as you get up to three thousand, it just sings, man. Really? So yeah. now what is what is it like starting out? Kind of like Chuck, you, you no, no, I just keep there? the RPMs up. Oh, do, okay, good yep. for you. That's very cool. Yep. I mean, this is really neat. This is set up, you said, these are set up for motorcycles. Well, these, uh, Gen V, Gen who, v? Ma who makes the components for this injection, Okay. they make injection for race cars and for motorcycles. Okay. And on a motorcycle, you'll see each one of these will be for each port on a motorcycle. Oh, I see, okay, okay, okay. But it was a purpose-built injection just for this car. And actually, with the car, I got an extra computer, thank goodness. Oh, good for you? 
That's very cool. So I got, it's like a typical race car. You get a lot of spares with it. Of course. Yeah. Have you tracked it at all? No, I haven't. No, do you plan on doing that or probably not? Probably not. I, well, if I get a, if I, I get an opportunity, I will. I will. Fun. Yeah. Good for you. Because you know, there's a lot of track opportunities out here in the valley. Yeah. And, uh, now tell me about driving this car. It's the right hand drive. Correct. What's that like? Oh, yeah. All my life, I've driven both right and left, so it's. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, it doesn't good. intimidate me, but it okay. intimidates bidders, which is good. <laughs> oh, good no! Point. When I saw the car and I saw his right-hand drive, I thought, "Well, that eliminates ninety percent of the bidders right there." Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. And it, it didn't come up on a prime day. I think oh. it came up on a Thursday. Well, oh, that's not bad at all. And at Bear Jackson, you know, the deep pockets don't show up until about Friday. Right. And they show up about six or seven at night. Oh, right. This was mid afternoon. I thought, this is perfect. Good for you. <laughs> for me. Good for you. As long as you don't have one other guy that right. really wants a car. <laughs> and that didn't happen? No, it didn't. Good, good, good. This is really neat. It's got to be fun to drive. So we talked about that briefly. I mean, where's the coolest place you've taken this car? This car is like a mountain car, yeah. a desert car. Uh, it's uh, cruising on the, you know, the uh, A1A car or up the, the intercoastal highway up the, to Santa Barbara from LA. I mean, where's the coolest place you take this car? The mountain car. Really? I live in the foothills up here by Carefree. Okay. And within 15 minutes, I can be in the twisties in the mountains. So Good it's perfect. You. Is it? Yeah. I bet you just get done. You just have a big old grin. Oh. You're rolling in here. You had a big old grin on your face. Yeah, I told you when I turned 70 a few years ago, I thought, no more boring cars. Yeah, good for you. That's <laughs> and cool. no more garage queens. Right, <laughs> right. You said if, it, if it's a purpose-built race car, and you know, if it has road rash, that's patina. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why I like X race cars. Yes. If you have road rash, it's patina. Exactly right. It's not flaws. It's very, very <laughs> true, yeah. You've got very, very impeccable tasting cars. I'll tell you, you don't see this car very much. And I can't imagine there's very many of these cars left, especially in this condition, here and kind of let alone the world. No, I mean, it, it's a one of a kind. And you know, at auctions, normally you have bad surprises. With this car, has only been good surprises. Good for you. Yeah. Wow, good for you. Well, as we wrap up here, Rich, is there anything you want to tell the, the car collector or the car enthusiast out there that comes to mind about the industry, about collecting cars or something? Is there anything that comes to mind? Well, drive them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, drive them. That's what they're made for, drive them. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Folks, I'll tell you, it's been a sincere pleasure here having Rich here with me, and he says drive them. And you know what we say in Eric's Garage AZ land is, drive them like you stole it, bitches. I'll see you. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on Eric's Garage, AZ.